love of God through His goodness upon your life. Hallelujah. Lord, we just want to say thank you for giving us again another day and time that we can be in your presence. That we can worship you, Lord. Thank you. Praise you, Lord and exalt and magnify your holy name. Lord, in obedience to your word that we must not forsake the assemblies together as the matter of some. And so, God, we are here in your presence, humbly asking you, O oh God, to purify and consecrate and sanctify our hearts and mind and soul and spirit and body. Lord, from all unclean thoughts, words, reaction, behavior, Lord, that we have committed against your will. May you purify and cleanse us. Uh, and Lord, consecrate our hearts and mind and soul and spirit and body with your purity and holiness and righteousness. In Christ Jesus, our Lord, with your precious blood, Lord Jesus with your sanctifying power and fire, Holy Spirit. And Lord, we, we humbly pray today that you will bless us with the living word that Jesus our Lord promised, Father, and with the presence and anointing of your Holy Spirit. Let your word fill our heart with your wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Let your living word, God, destroy Satan's lies and deception. Let your living word be exalted, be magnified, and let your people be equipped, be edified, be strengthened. Yes, my God. And Lord, we just want to say thank you for loving us just the way we are, oh God, though we are undeserving. And we thank you, God, for all the favor and blessings that you have given us, your guidance and direction. And Lord, we pray for our brothers and sisters who are joining us online and those who will be watching this service later on. We pray, God, that you will touch their heart and bless them, empower and strengthen them. And Lord, we that are here today, we just want to say thank you, God. We give you all the glory, all the honor and praise. Bless your people now in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Give the Lord a big hand. God bless you. Remain standing. You may greet someone standing beside you. Give them a smile. Tell them it's good to see you today. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, welcome to our uh, Sunday service. It's a little echo here, Mike. Uh, Mark. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. What a wonderful Sunday. Amen. It's a beautiful day to be in the presence of God and to be among our brothers and sisters in the Lord. Amen. How many of you know that this is a special day for God? Amen. A special day for each and every one of us. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, if this is your first time, we just want to say we welcome you. We're happy to have you here today, and um, we pray that you will be blessed, and the Word will uh, encourage you today. And to those who are watching us online, we welcome you as well. God bless you. Amen. It's good to see Sam here. God bless you, Sam. <laughs> Amen. Okay, so we're going to start. Reading our scriptures today. Our scriptures is in Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 29. Uh, this is just one verse, but we're going to be going through a lot of scriptural verses later on. You know, just like what, D, uh, what our Lord Jesus Christ has said, Man doesn't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Amen. The more we hear God's word, the more we feed our spirit. Amen. The more we feed our spirit, the more life we receive from God. Hallelujah. Okay, so if you're ready, please turn with me in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 7, 
verse 29. As we all know, this is the writing of one of the, I would say, the Bible says, the wisest man that have ever lived in the world, uh, ex, of course, aside from the Lord Jesus Christ, yet in all his wisdom, uh, he found himself in a big mess because he kind of walked away from the principle of God. Okay, so verse 29, this is what King Solomon said. Truly, this only I have found, means he discovered, realized. And what was that? That God made men upright, but they have sought out many schemes. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You may all be seated. Give the Lord a big hand. <clears throat> Amen. Uh, it's a long weekend. I do understand a lot of people are taking advantage on this uh, uh, government uh, privilege that they can take an extra day off. But for you who decided to stay back and be in the church, the Lord bless you. Amen. Amen. Give yourself a big end. Okay, today's uh, message is about God's simple solution to humanity's negative condition. How many of you would like to have a simple solution when you face a very difficult situation. You're not going to have a difficulty thinking what you should be doing in order to either come out out of your awful uh, condition. You want simple thing, right? You know, if you are in a classroom, sometimes there are teachers that can be explaining one thing into different thing, right? One can be explaining it in a simple way that can be easily understand. The other one can be explaining it in a more elaborated and a difficult one. I don't like that one. <laughs> when someone tried to explain something to me, I want to understand things the easy way. Amen? But the scripture shows to us, the Bible says that God made man upright. You know, when the word upright simply means Everything you and I needed to have in life to make our life simple, okay, God has, be, uh, God has already provided it. But as we all know, uh, things are not going well the way we expect it, the way we see it. Uh, the scripture says that, you know, men try to seek things, you know, apart from the principles of God. And because of that, you and I, or humanities, have experienced a lot of negative things in life. Now, how many of you know that to be in a negative condition is not something that you want to have in life? Okay, when we talk about negative condition, we talk about problems. We talk about challenges. We talk about trials, okay? We talk about tribulation. We talk about a lot of awful negative things in life. Now, if I will ask you this question, how would you like yourself to be in that condition? No, but we have to face the reality that we go through these things in life. Amen? We all have problems. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Okay? We all have problems. And of course, our problems sometimes can be different, the level and the degree of, of pain and the, uh, and the pressure, okay, based on the kind of decision you and I make. But how many of you know that in every problems you have, there are solutions? Hello? Okay, in every problem you and I have, God has a solution. And... It's just a matter of, okay, accepting God's solution. Amen? Because if we try to walk away from what God said in his word, then the more we place ourselves in a deeper problem. And this is what's happening in the world today. Okay? The Bible says that God made man upright, means wise. 
We, we have a built-in capacity to make the right decision, to think right. But as we can see today, man is not utilizing uh, a God-given gift to men in order to better their lives, okay? In order for us to think well, okay? Now, let's just start with these things, okay? Why do we have so many problems in life today? Um, you know, for those of you who doesn't see him having a problem right now, I'm going to say this to you, rejoice and be glad. Because one day you're going to have one. <laughs> okay? Why? Because um, you, you understand and you know that you're not perfect. Amen? And sometimes with our wrong decision, trusting wrong people, it can invite a very serious problem. Okay? So let's just start from the beginning. Uh, the author we have today, King Solomon, being the wise man in the world, as he began to observe how people live, how people go through in life, he sees a lot of things happening in the lives of people. Some people are happy. Some people are, are miserable. Some people are having you know, a good time. Some people are going through some tough times in life. And King Solomon realized that there is a reason why some people are going through some tough times in life. Okay? So the question we have here today is, why do we have so many problems in life today? Our personal lives, problems in, the, in our nation. Okay, let me just say this word. Most of human problems today are a direct result of a personal wrong decision. Okay, let me just repeat that word. Most of human problems today are a direct result of a personal wrong decision in complete contradiction and in opposition against God's will. That is the main reason, because the scripture says that God made man upright. The way God wants us to think, the way God wants us to live, the way God wants us to behave, God placed it all inside of you and me. So that when we talk, when we live, when we think, it, it will all correspond to the way God wants us to live. Amen? And the reason why God placed is uprightness in us so that you and I will always make a right decision and making right decision brings peace brings joy brings prosperity and success amen but the problem here is this the scriptures shows to us that instead of men following the ways of God the principles of God the Bible says a man deviated Man chose to choose their own ways rather than God's ways. So when you and I choose our own ways, I want you to know this, guys. It will always bring us into a problem. It will always create a problem. That's why most of our problems today are a direct result of our personal wrong decision, incomplete contradiction and opposition against the will of God. May it be our finances. May it be our health. Okay? May it be our relationship. God has given you and me a guideline so that when we follow them, we invite peace, we invite joy, we invite harmony. Amen? Not problems. Now, let me bring you to the first uh, source of problem. Today, we're going to be talking something like, you know, the cause, the reason, and the solution, okay? The first source of problem actually started by man's disobedience in the Garden of Eden. We know the story, right? And the reason why it's good to go back from the beginning is so that you and I will understand the importance of, okay, seeing the importance of following 
God's command. Amen. Now let me show you in this story, God gave man a command. The command goes like this. Of every tree in the garden in Genesis 2, 15 to 16, God said to Adam and Eve, of every tree in the garden, you may freely eat, including the tree that gives, okay, man's life, that will sustain their life so that they can live forever. How many of you know that that's a good deal? Okay, God said, of every tree, enjoy your life. Everything here is all yours, including that tree of life, so that you will live forever. Now, how many of you knows that if you are Adam and Eve and you're thinking right, you're going to say that's a good deal. Amen? And then God said, he added, but, there's a word but. How many of you knows the word but is a word of condition? Okay? God said, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, what's his word? You shall not eat. How many of you know that here we are today living? How many of you know that this command is so clear? Not difficult to understand, right? But this is the thing here. A clear instruction from the word of God, sometimes man makes it difficult to understand. God said, of all the tree you may freely eat, but of the tree that will give you the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. And then God laid it clear to them, made it clear to them the reason why. God said, if you eat the fruit that will give you life, you will live forever. But if you will eat the fruit that will give you the knowledge of good and evil... God said, he clearly stated the consequences. For in the day, on verse 17, for in the day you shall eat of it, you shall surely die. Now God gave, okay, the clear consequences if they will contradict God's word. So the decision is now in their hand. Someone came along, someone showed up, and you know who that is, right? Your neighbor. <laughs> Satan showed up, and then he began to make a conversation with a woman. And Satan wants to find out what God really said, okay? And so he began to make a conversation with the woman, and the woman with his with her gullibility and naivety, began to expose what God had said or what God had told them. And then Satan contradicted the word of God. How many of you knows that the only, that the first one and the only one that will always contradict the word of God is no other than Satan? That's why we as Christians, we have to understand these guys. That when we contradict the word of God with our minds, someone is behind your mind. Okay? Or someone else is contradicting the word of God. And so Satan said, oh no, it's not going to happen. In fact, if you eat the fruit that will give you the knowledge of good and evil, you will become like God. So what Satan did to Adam and Eve, he accuses God. He made God a liar. He made, he made them think that God is depriving them of something that they should have. And so instead of sticking on what God said, they believe Satan's lies. And guess the consequences. Whatever God has said, it happened. God said, from the day you eat the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall surely die. That's why we die. Amen? We may live for a while, but one day you and I will die. Okay? Look at this. From the day men fell into their negative condition, God already declared his plan of solution. Remember in the Garden of Eden, right? In every problem men will have, God always has a solution. 
And this solution is something that you and I needed to know and accept. Because if we reject God's solution, then we are going, I mean, we are going further away from the will of God. Amen? So this is what God did. We know the solution, right? While men wait for God's plan of solution or salvation, men must wait and go through many negative and awful conditions of life. Now, how many of you know sometimes when we have problems in life, solution doesn't come right away? We have to wait, right? We have to be patient. Imagine, okay, when man fell into sin, the solution that God had planned did not fulfill or did not came until 4,000 years after. And this is what God said, okay? Genesis 3.15, God spoke the solution. That's how much God loves humanity. God said, and I will put enmity between you and the woman. God is talking to the serpent or Satan, okay? And between your seed, okay, which is, talks about those people who will follow Satan's lies and deception, and her seed talks about Jesus our Lord, Amen. That's why the coming of Jesus is not an accident. It has been planned in redeeming men. God knew the problem of humanity and God knew the solution as well. God knows the best solution in redeeming men. And the reason why I'm saying this to you guys, as we go through, you will understand why, okay? And then God said, he shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. So while man is waiting for the redemption that God planned in redeeming humanity, humanity goes through a lot of, okay, a lot of problems, a lot of trials. That's why we're still here today. Now let me show you some of the problems that the world are facing today. They see it. They experience it. They know it, okay? Let me show you some examples. And the reason why I am bringing you in this direction is so that you will see that there are more severe problems that can be happening in the future. And you and I needed to avoid these things, amen? Okay, here are some of the problems. One is what we call sickness. Now, how many of you know that sickness is one of the problems that humanity is facing today? That's why we have hospitals. Amen? Imagine this. When God, the day God created man, God did not create a hospital. Because there's no, there was no sickness in those days. Amen? No problem. No prison jail. <laughs> okay? Look at this, how God provide a solution. First of all, how does God show to us in his word about sickness? Well, go to God and pray. That's the first thing, amen? amen. It doesn't say go away from God and complain. The best solution is go to God and pray. You can't do anything. When you get sick, you're sick, right? But what's the best thing to do? It's not to complain. It's not to blame God. It's not to accuse God. Because if we blame God and accuse God and complain, the more we make things worse. And so the best thing to do is go to God and pray. Amen? Because that's what the Bible says. Go to your doctor and take his advice. Hello? Okay? The doctor are your, one of your best friends. Amen? Okay? They're not perfect, but at least they can help you. Right? Don't walk away from your doctor. Don't be your doctor yourself. Amen? These are just a practical advice. Okay? Eat and rest well. Because if you don't eat and rest well, you're going to have a problem. Now, how many of you know that that's a simple solution? Okay? But man, the Bible says, the scripture says, men always seek out a way from the ways of God. That brings problem. Don't be stressed. 
and don't worry about your life. Because the more you, be, the more you stress yourself, the more you invite sickness. I know it's easy to say, but we got no choice. Amen? But do exactly, because these are the sample of uprightness. Isn't it that's what the Bible says? That God made man, the word upright, to think right, to speak right, to live right, to behave right. That's the word uprightness. But men, in, a, in our stubbornness and hard-headedness, we always, we don't even say this to God. God, I'm smarter than you. That's why I choose my way. We don't say that directly, but with our decision, we show that to God. And so we got no choice if you want to better your life. Amen? The other one is financial needs. The reason why we're going through some financial problems today, it's not because of God. It's because of us. Let me show you the solution, and we see by this solution, we see the contradiction, okay? Financial need. First of all, the solution God says in his word, I have all the scriptures for you, I can show, but I'm just saving time, okay? Financially, if you have a financial need, go out and find work. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Simple as that, right? Because the Bible says, if you don't work, you don't eat. Because laziness is the opposite of work. Amen? Simple solution, go out and find work. You cannot stay home and, and, and expect job to come to you. Work, even in the Bible. If you don't plant your seed, you don't grow a harvest. If you don't cook your meal, you got nothing to it. It always requires work. Say the word work, work, work. <laughs> but the Bible tells us don't over work. <laughs> the Bible tells us to work but not overwork. Okay? Go and find work. Then once you get your salary, once you get your save and don't live a one day millionaire lifestyle. It talks about proper budgeting. Amen. Don't go over your budget because most of our financial problems today is because of not knowing how to properly budget our finances. I've been there, done that. <laughs> okay? So, you've got to discipline your financial expenditures. Simple solution. I'm just simply showing to you guys how God made man upright Okay, what that word meant, how God gives men the ability to think right. And if we don't utilize this ability to think right, we're going to have a problem. Okay, I'm just showing you a simple solution. Think about this, guys. You have that ability built in inside of you. The only thing you and I needed to do is to make a decision to choose to do it, okay? Give what belongs to God. There's no shortcut, guys. We heard the testimony, lots of testimony. But man goes away from or walk away from the principles of God. You cannot contradict the will of God and expect God's will to work on your behalf. You cannot, guys. We cannot ex expect God to produce the promises that he gives you and me in his word when we contradict his word. It will never work. It will never work. So in our finances, you find works, you save, budget your money, and then bring or give what belongs to God. I, I'm telling these guys. God doesn't tell you and me to give what belongs to him. Because he needed it. 
It is a test of our obedience to him. And when we obey him, God will do exactly what he promised in his word. Amen? Mental and emotional problem. Why are we having a mental and emotional problem? It's not because, remember guys, look, we're going back and forth on the scriptures. God made man upright. It means God made man perfect. Why are we having this mental and emotional problem aside from physical and financial problem? Was it God's doing? No. It is man's doing. It is, uh, that's why if you are going through some problems, okay, don't blame God. Don't question God. Either you and I cooperated with Satan's lies in contradicting the will of God, or we willfully chose to contradict the will of God. And so the best thing to do when we get into a problem, don't question or blame God, but rather come to God and humble ourselves and say, God, I need you to help me make the right decision. Amen? I need you, Lord, to help me come out of this problem. And so God comes to you with a solution. And so when God gives you the solution, what are we supposed to do? We accept his solution. Because if we think, oh, God, I cannot do this. I cannot accept this. Well, God said, I can't do anything. Because that's the best solution. If you want, okay, to solve your problem. Mental and emotional problem, okay. Aside from inviting stress and worries because we know when we make wrong decision and we knew the awful consequences, that invites worries, okay? The Bible clearly tells us those who knows God and, and knows his power and faithfulness, they have, this, they have this peace of mind that they can truly trust God, okay? So mental and emotional problem. The solution, just put your faith and trust in God and in his faithfulness, not on, your, not on what you can do. Because if you can trust yourself, then you don't need God. Okay? But men always say, no, I can't. this is not the way I, I'm expecting God. I'm expecting God to do my way. It, it, will, it will never work. Okay? Set your mind on him and not on your problems. You might say, well, Pastor Jim, it's so easy for you to say that. You don't know the kind of problems I'm going through. I know. We all got problems, but we got no choice. Amen? Because the Bible says those who set their mind on God, they will have a perfect peace. It's hard, but we just got to do it. Amen? We don't have a choice but to put our faith and trust in God. In fact, there's so much scriptures that talks about these things. Now, whatever problems you and I have here, in fact, if you read the book of Psalm, David said in the midst of his problems, in the midst of his troubles, he knew the right thing to do. And that's to call on God. He said, God, I call on you in, the, in times of my troubles and you deliver me. In fact, one of his experience when he came back from, you know, uh, supposed to be supporting King, uh, uh, the king of God in fighting King Saul. When they came back, their whole family was taken captive. And, and the people are so stressed up and they are planning to stone David because of, you know. His, but the Bible says, but David chose to strengthen himself in the Lord. 
And so because of that, he was able to get a clear direction from God. And he was able to recover, the Bible says, nothing was lost. Because David chose to strengthen himself in the Lord. Now me saying this to you guys, have I done it in my personal life? Yes. I got no choice because I realize if I am facing problems, if I am facing trials, I got no choice but to come to God because he knows the best ways. He knows the best solution. He knows the best thing to do. Amen? I have to put my faith in him. I got no choice if I want to see myself coming out out of that awful condition. I've done it because, you know, I, I understand I got no choice, okay? So, we're still going to be facing problems here because Jesus said, in the world you will have tribulation. In the world. As long you and I live in the world, you and I will always be facing these challenges. But take courage. God made a promise. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. He will always be there for you. He will give you the grace that you need when you needed it. He will give you the strength that you need when you feel so weak. He will give you the peace that you need when you are being overwhelmed. Because that's the kind of God we have. Amen. But there is a problem that humanity doesn't know that they are about to face. And this problem is something that they can never change for eternity. And you and I needed to know this as a Christian. Because you and I are not exempted with this future negative problem. You and I needed to understand. That's why I am showing you the severity. The consequences that people are going through in life because they did not see the importance of staying in the will of God. But they chose their own ways, their own will, okay? Let me show this second thing to you. There are unknown problems or negative conditions human will suffer for eternity without them even knowing it. Maybe they heard a little bit about it, or maybe they heard so much about it, but they don't pay attention to it. But we as a Christian, we have to pay attention carefully, amen? Because if you don't, you and I will not be exempted. And so as a Christian, we have the advantage, because God gives you and me a warning to know them so that we can avoid them. And if you and I chose to still walk away and contradict the will of God, these things are unavoidable. Okay? Let me say this word. There are words sometimes that you and I doesn't want to hear, but we have to hear them. Amen? There are words <laughs> from God that man doesn't want to hear, but it's good to hear them because it gives us the advantage. Okay? It's just like um, you know, if you see a food, uh, a certain food that looks delicious, tastes delicious. There, but then someone gave you a warning, but, you know, they're not beneficial for your health. So what are you supposed to do? You know, last week my hand, I could not believe that my hand was swollen. I thought it's an arthritis. I was denying it. Oh, this is just a tritis. Because I could feel the pain on the joint. Normally, I used to get my gout on my foot. And 
I used to get my gout on my left foot. I know the, the feeling, I know the symptoms. And sometimes I know how I got it. But when it's gone, I tend to compromise and then I get it back. And one day, I didn't get it on my left foot, I got it on my right foot. I said, I know the solution. I have to drink lots of juice, like juice some ginger, apple, and what else? Um, cucumber and uh, celery. I said, these things can easily go away and then come back and enjoy the meal again. At that time, I did not know about the anti-inflammatory medication. So I tend to suffer the pain for about sometimes the whole month. And so one day I got it on my right foot. I said, oh no, I'm going to juice. So it went away on my right foot, and to my surprise, it transferred on my left foot. I said, this thing doesn't want to go away. So I kept on drinking and drinking. And I was so shocked, the God said, oh, you want to get rid of me? I'll go on both foot. So I got, and I could not walk. I said, oh my gosh. So instead of me walking on my two foot, on my two legs, I walk on my bum bum on the side. <laughs> you could see my condition, guys. And so the doctor, I talked to my doctor in my desperation. Doctor, I'm having the, okay. Can you issue me, an, I'll, my own thinking goes like this. Can you issue me allopurinol? Allopurinol, it, uh, it dissolves uric acid. My doctor, who think better than me, said, you don't need allopurinol at this time because it won't do you any good. What you need is anti-inflammatory medication. What is that anti-inflammatory? It's anti-inflammatory. <laughs> so uh, my wife, uh, I told my, go get this medication. I just drank it once and it went away because my doctor thinks better than I think <laughs> and I enjoy my life. But then I abuse, I indulge myself with delicious food that I'm not supposed to eat too much or even taste. And so I felt the pain. I said, oh, this is just arthritis. I bought the wrong medication. It did not do me any good. Because I bought the medication for arthritis. But the one I have is not arthritis. It's gout. And this was so swollen. And so the good thing, I still have some left uh, anti-inflammatory. So I kept on drinking it. And so as you could see, it began to subside down. But it's painful. And the reason why I had that, it is because I chose to do my thing rather than following the right thing. I'm not supposed to eat something that can trigger the gout. But because I could not help myself with the temptation of food, I said, oh, maybe just a little bit here and there. A little bit here and there did not help me. And so, for those of you who like so much meat, what's up, okay? Let me say this word. Sometimes my wife tells me, why you keep on eating and eating this? But my wife kept on buying and buying it. <laughs> I got no choice. I said, honey, I, got, I don't want to be hungry. I just have to eat what you cook for me. My wife said, don't eat this, but she buys it. <laughs> so I have to protect myself, okay? So now, I said a while ago, there are words that you and I need to help us solve the problem, come out of the problem. But we don't want to hear them. We don't want to accept them. But we don't have a choice, amen? And so let me say this word. There are people who will be facing God in the final judgment to be condemned because God wants to condemn them, 
to be cast out out of heaven, not because God doesn't want them to be in heaven, and to be thrown in hell forever, not because God wants them there forever, without them even knowing it. That's why realizing this, guys, makes my heart cry and pray for people who doesn't know God, to hear God's love, to know God's ways and will so that they can avoid these things. And we that are here today, guys, don't take this lightly. Because if you don't take this word seriously, you don't even know it along the way. Your mind changes and you cannot avoid these things. That's why we have to take our relationship with God seriously. Amen. There are people who will be facing God in the final judgment to be condemned, to be cast out, out of heaven, to be thrown in hell forever without them even knowing it. Let me show you some scriptures, okay? The first one. There are many who will be cursed into everlasting fire without them even knowing it. In Matthew 25, verse 41, look at this. I'm just kind of... Uh, Cutting things down to you, okay? Then Jesus said, he will also say to those on the left hand. This is in the final judgment. The world doesn't know this. The world mocked this. Okay? Jesus said on the, those on the left hand, depart from me, you curse into the everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. Wow. This everlasting fire has never been prepared by God for humanity. He prepared it for the devil and his fallen angels. But there are men and women, people going there, not because God wants them to be there, but men and women will be there because they chose to seek out their own ways rather than God's ways. God said, depart from me, you curse into the everlasting fire. Never end. Matthew 25, 34, all the way to verse 46. Can we pop those scriptures out? But I'm just going to read this short word. And this, this, these are the people who sought their own ways. Contradict God's word. Live their own way. And this will go away into everlasting punishment but the righteous into eternal life. Did you see the word righteous there? These are the people who stick in the will of God. These are the people who made a decision. I'm not going out out of the will of God. I'm not going to contradict the ways of God. That's why the Bible says, but the righteous into eternal life. Now whose fault was it? Why some went into everlasting fire. Not God. It's the people. This will go into everlasting punishment. Because. Okay. The future problem goes like this. God said in the final judgment. Depart from me. You curse into the everlasting fire. That is the future problem. And the reason why, 42 to 46, it is because of disobedience. On verse 42, and it says here, then he will answer them saying, they were asking God a question. Why are you, why are we going there? Why are we heading down there? Why are we getting these consequences? Then he will answer them saying, Assuredly, I say to you, and as much as you did not do it. It means they contradicted the word of God. They did their own way. To one of the least, you did not do it to me. Hebrews 12, uh, Hebrews 2, 2, it says here, In every transgression and disobedience, what's this word? Receive a just reward. And this is what the world doesn't understand. They shook their fists in front of God's face. They challenge God. They defy God. They mock God. 
as if they are in power and authority. You see the world we are living in today? They say whatever they want to say. They think that they're smarter and better than, than God. They, 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 they think that they're the one that created God. They think that they're the one in control over their life. They could care less. They say whatever they want to say. Look what's happening in the news today. Preachers on the street, they mock them. They curse them. They don't even realize in every transgression and disobedience receive a just reward. One day, whether they like it or not, why God is so quiet? Why God is not doing anything? Because in His grace, in His mercy, in His love for humanity, He gives everyone the opportunity to recognize their needs. He gives them the opportunity to know the love of God by His word. But men still chose to do their own way. Hebrews 4, 6, look at this. And to those to whom, what's his word? It was first preached. Uh, you know, God's way goes like this. Before man gets into a, a problem, God gives them the, the awareness so that they can avoid it. The people who have lived before us, even before the day the Lord Jesus Christ came, God gave them the opportunity to avoid not just only the present problem they have, but the future problem. Look at this. And to those to whom it was first prince. Who is this first prince? The first generation. The first civilization. Aside from us, Okay. What's this? Did not enter because of disobedience. The Apostle Paul talks about the nation of Israel. They did not enter into the promised land because of disobedience that represents us entering heaven in the future. And this is Satan's deception, guys. People create their own way of thinking. God is a God of love and mercy and grace. He will never bring anyone in hell. He will not judge anyone. He loves everyone. That is all true. But it's just half truth. Because the Bible says, in spite of God's love and mercy and grace and compassion on humanity... God gives his command, his word, so that men will not be in this awful future condition. But men created their own thinking, oh, God will never send it. Yeah, God doesn't send anyone in hell. It is men that send themselves in hell. Not God. That's why God doesn't bring you and me into any problems or trouble. It is us that brings ourselves to problems and troubles because of our wrong decision, because we choose our ways, not God's ways. We have to understand this fact. Amen. Did not enter the solution. Obedience in opposite. And the king will answer and say to the right. Assuredly, I say to you because they were asking, Lord. When did we see you uh, hungry and we fed you? When did we see you naked and clothed you? When did we see you in prison and we visited? When did we see you sick and we prayed for you and visited you? And Jesus said, in as much as you did it to one of the least. Did you see that? In as much as you did it to one of the least of this, my brethren, you did it to me. That's why there are many will be in everlasting fire without them knowing it. There are many, the second one, who will be condemned to the judgment day without them even knowing it. They'll be surprised. John 3, 18, look at this. He who believes in him, in, in Jesus, is not condemned. But he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. The future problem that men will be facing without them knowing it is they refuse to believe. Okay, because the Bible says, but he who does not believe 
is condemned already. The gospel is being preached all over the world and men chose not to believe the message of the gospel. The love of God. They don't even realize that they are bringing themselves into this future problem. What's the future, pro future problem? It's a condemnation. The reason? John 3, 19 to 20. Men love darkness rather than light. Reasons. Men love darkness rather than light. God came as a light. God told men be in the light. And God told men you are the light. But the Bible says men chose to love darkness. And this is the condemnation that the light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. In verse 19, verse 20, for everyone practicing evil hates the light. Who is the light? Jesus, his word. And does not come to the light, does not come to God, to Jesus, lest his deeds should be exposed. One of the reasons why people are trying to walk away from God, because they don't want God to interfere in their life. They don't want their evil deeds, their evil desire to be stopped. That's the main reason. But we got no choice if you want to make it to heaven. Amen? Amen. You have no choice if you want to escape this everlasting fire. You have, you have no choice if you want to escape this condemnation. We don't have a choice, guys. We have to make a decision. Okay, the solution to the problem, this future problem. John 3, 16 to 17. Just believe in Christ and his sacrifice on the cross. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. What, is, what does God expect? That whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Simple solution. Amen? What's God's solution? Just believe and receive Christ. For God did not send his son into the world. What's his word? To condemn the world. But that the world through him might be saved. Simple solution. Number three, there are many who will not see the Lord Jesus. There are many who doesn't know that they will be in the everlasting fire. There are many who doesn't know that they will be condemned when they face God in the judgment day. There are many who doesn't even know who will not see the Lord Jesus Christ when they die. Look at this, Hebrews 12, 14 to 15. Let's just read the word. The Bible says, Pursue peace with all people and holiness, without which, ah, simple solution. How many people would like to see the Lord? Some, uh, well, not now, Pastor. <laughs> I still want to leave. Of course. <laughs> Even me. <laughs> but we know and we know one day you and I will leave this world. Amen? One way or the other. But when you leave this world, either you see the Lord or you see hell. And hell is an eternal problem that cannot be escaped. And cannot be free from. That's why while we are here. We have to find God's simple solution. Amen. There are many who will not see the Lord. In the future. Now the future problem. The Bible says without wits. Without wits what? Peace and holiness. No one will see the Lord. Now, I'm going to show you, okay, the reasons why in this particular passage of scriptures, no one will see the Lord. On verse 15, if you will read it, okay. The reason why many people will not see the Lord, the Bible says, because there is a root of bitterness is springing up 
that cause trouble. And by these, many become defiled. You know, in 2 Corinthians 7, verse 1, the Apostle Paul says, Since we are having all these promises, let us cleanse ourselves from the defilement of the flesh. This is what we do sinfully. And the defilement in the spirit, which is bitterness, anger, unforgiveness, resentment, pride, ego, harshness. All those sinful things. I want you to know this, guys, okay? Don't expect yourselves to be in heaven or to see the Lord when you choose to keep bitterness and anger and unforgiveness, pride, envy, and jealousy, harshness, rudeness, gossiping, and slandering when you cannot discipline your mouth, okay? Don't expect yourself to see the Lord. But some people still choose because of their it's just like for whatever reason, they choose to slander consistently. They choose to criticize and speak negative things about other people. They choose to speak in pride. They choose to speak in hatred and bitterness and anger. And then when they die, they expect themselves to be in heaven as if they are the one that owns heaven. As if they are entitled to be in heaven no matter what. Well, the good news, the truth of the matter is this. You're not God. He is. He owns heaven. You're not. And so we got no choice but to humble ourselves before God and ask God for forgiveness. Amen? And do exactly what God says. Look at this. The reason men chose instead of living in purity, instead of living in humility, they chose to keep bitterness. Now, there are many reasons why you and I become bitter, right? Okay, there are many reasons. Sometimes the devil comes to you and lies in your mind. You have the reason to be bitter. You have the reason to be angry. You have the reason to keep this hatred, this unforgiveness. You got hurt. You got taken advantage. You are wrong. And, and sometimes most of the time we fail to see that we have a part to play why we got into that awful condition. It takes two to tango. It's not all the other side fault. We have a fault. As long as we keep ourselves from knowing our fault, we will always think we have a valid reason to be angry. We have a valid reason to be hateful. To keep this bitterness and anger. Rather than humbling ourselves before God and say, God, I'm... Lord, I, I put myself in your hand. Trust you, Lord. I know, God, you, you know what I feel. I was so hurt, this, this, and that. The more we reason out, the more we miss the will of God. Less any root of bitterness. It began to grow deep. Guys, I got hurt. I got taken advantage. I was, I was lied on. I was accused falsely. But it doesn't mean I am perfect. It doesn't mean I don't have wrong. I have to admit the fact that I wrong other people. I have to admit the fact that I hurt people. I have taken advantage on people. I have a role to play Why I am in this mess. I just have to learn to forgive. You know, the devil came, you know, I even came to the point of really... Having these thoughts of so much hatred about a particular person, a group of people. And I did not enjoy my life. It did not do me good. It did not help me to come out of that problem. Rather, I go deeper and deeper and deeper into a misery. But by the grace of God, I knew that I don't have a choice. And there's no way. And there's no other way. But to do exactly what God said. I have to get down on my knees and humble myself. And I said, okay, God, I chose to forgive them. I chose to forgive them and love them, Lord, with the same forgiveness you have forgiven me. Because too often, 
I forgot and we forgot that God himself forgave us with all the sins we have committed. And so Jesus said, if you will not forgive others, your heavenly father will not also forgive you. Simple as that. If you want to live in peace, if you want to have peace of mind, if you want to live happy, do exactly what God said. Amen. And so this is what many Christians are not understanding. They chose bitterness in your marriage relationship, guys. Don't keep bitterness and anger no matter what. Hello. Because if you die, don't expect to be in heaven. Don't expect to see the Lord. Remember the testimony? He was even a pastor on his way to the church. He had a fight with his wife. And he had an accident and he died. And he expect himself to be in heaven. The angels first showed him heaven. And then showed him in hell after. And then the angel to his shock told him this is where you're supposed to be. And he said what? I'm a pastor. I'm a Christian. I love the Lord. Yes but on your way to the church you had a fight with your wife. And you had that bitterness in your heart. And he cried and cried and cried in hell. But thank God, God gave him the opportunity to live again. In fact, that's a reality. It was so, uh, three days, he was dead. His body was already dead, stiff, hard. But he came back alive and he learned his lesson. You and I doesn't need to be in hell first before we learn the importance of not keeping bitterness and anger. Right now, we can even learn that. Amen? So that we can avoid hell. God has a simple solution, not just only to your problems today, but to the future problem. The Bible says, Lest any root of bitterness springing up cause trouble to you today, and in the future. God can heal your heart. As God healed my heart. You can just. God I'm having a difficulty loving and forgiving people. But God. I know you. It is your will for me to love and forgive people. So God Lord I bring my heart to you. Heal me. Rather than keep on saying. Nah, <laughs> oh it won't help you. Remember, guys, hell is eternity. Children are so simple to convince. Joshua is raising their children. And so sometimes they want to watch this TV program that they're not even supposed to watch. And so Joshua made them watch something different that can be beneficial to them. And Joshua said, okay, either I turn off the TV or you watch that. And so they don't complain. They don't want the TV to be shut out, uh, to be turned off. And so they want something more wholesome and healthy and beneficial. It's the same thing to you and me. Amen. We got no choice, guys. The reason why many will not see the Lord, because they allow bitterness to stay in their heart. I would rather choose heaven and see the Lord rather than me enjoying the pain of bitterness in my heart. Amen? Okay. The solution? Pursue peace with all people. When I say, when the word of God pursue peace means what's out, what comes out, out of your mouth. Don't speak a word to your brother and sister in the Lord that will create a division, discord, disunity, trouble, thinking you're smarter than anyone else. The reason why you say, don't open your mouth in criticism, cynicalism, in slandering. Never, never open your mouth. Because if you open your mouth and you spoke criticism and slandering and criticizing others, that creates problems. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Too often people will criticize, okay, and, and find fault and speak negative things. They think that they are smarter than the other. Hello? That's the reality. 
That's why before we open our mouth, we have to think first. And we have to think many, many times. Too often people doesn't think twice or many, many times. Their mouth is faster than their mind. And don't make, before you make a decision, make sure it will not invite problems and it will not bring you to problems. Guys, Joseph thought first before he, made, he yielded, I mean, why he did not yield it to the temptation of Potiphar's wife. Because he knew the awful consequences. As a church, we have to think this. If you want to see the Lord, pursue peace with all people and holiness. What's this word? Without wits. Don't ever say, I'm a Christian. I got born again 20 years ago. I go to the church. I'm a worker of the church. It doesn't matter. Me saying this word to you guys, as a pastor, I'm not exempted to this. If I'm not exempted to this, neither you are. My wife, my children, if my children chose to do the opposite, they will not be exempted from the negative consequences. That's why we tell them. But they have to make a choice, and you have to make a choice. Amen? Without holiness, without holiness, no one will see the Lord. Holiness simply means if you sin, you ask God for forgiveness, ask God for cleansing, and don't do it over and over again. Amen? Plead the blood of Jesus. Soak your mind in the word of God. Be in the presence of God. That's how you keep the holiness that God plays over your life. Amen? Don't entertain that you are better than anyone else. That you deserve this. You are entitled to this. Be humble. Be simple. Walk in the love of God and in humility. Amen? Amen. Now, for those of you who are watching, maybe this is your first time. Probably you get... Let me give you a simple solution in avoiding this future known eternal problems. There's no other solution. Believe and do what God says on how we can avoid this known eternal problems. First one, 1 John 1, 9. This is the, the solution. Now, if you and me want to avoid this future eternal problem, we have to do the solution now. Amen. Don't accept the solution when you died, when it's already late. Look at this, 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins. In fact, the Bible says, if anyone says that they have no sin, they make God a liar. Everyone's sin, amen? Is that if we confess our sins, how does God respond? He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and not just only to forgive us, to cleanse us from all our unrighteousness. Confession of sin doesn't stop as long as we live. Because every day we sin against God. Amen? Second one, believe in your heart and receive Jesus as your Lord over your life. Simple solution, Romans 10, 9. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. And believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. What's this? You will. You will be saved from the everlasting fire. You will be saved from the condemnation. You will be saved from not seeing the Lord face to face. 1 Peter 1.15 Live for God as long as you live. But as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. It doesn't stop. Amen. So let's all stand up, please. Can we give the Lord a big hand here? Let's give the Holy Spirit. As we partake this communion, let us all make this decision. Whatever root of bitterness or offense, anger, or unforgiveness, let's get rid of them. Amen. God can help you. God's grace can help you. Whatever unholy thing that you are entertaining in your mind or you are planning to do or you're living, get rid of it because you can never tell 
when you will leave this world. You, would, you would not even know when you will leave this world. And so before we partake this communion, we're going to make a decision today to make ourselves right before God. Amen. Not in our own ways, but God's ways. Amen. We'll do exactly what God said. Okay, we'll do exactly what God said. And so when we do exactly what God said, God will do exactly what he promised in his word. Amen? Okay? Hallelujah. Can we just play a, a worship song here softly? Before we partake this communion, everyone's, everyone's head, please bow your head. And those of you who are watching and joining us online, we're going to come to God and, and pray sincerely from our heart. Amen. I believe the message we heard today is so timely. Because at any time, guys, the Lord will come. The rapture will take place. But don't miss the rapture. Wherever you are standing... Let not pride come in the way between you and God. Let not stubbornness or hard-headedness or your own personal justification. Just trust God. Everyone, please just do the first one. Confess before God any offenses, any sins, and humble yourself. And from this day on and say, Lord, I want to live for you under your Lordship. I want to put my faith, my trust in you. Those of you who are watching, please follow my word and pray it sincerely and say this word with me. Dear God in heaven, I come to you. I humble myself before you, God. And admit before you that I have sinned against your will. Please forgive me and cleanse me, Lord, from all my sins and my unrighteousness. And if there's bitterness in my heart, unforgiveness, resentment, hatred towards someone else, I renounce all those things. I forgive them, Lord, and I love them with the same forgiveness and love that you have for me. I forgive them, Lord, in your mighty name. And Lord, help me to live for you from this day on. Help me to live holy and righteously. I pray this, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. Do you know that the reason why many people are not living in peace, living happy, it is because they're not willing to renounce those hatred and bitterness and anger. But as we renounce them, you will see how God began to move in your life. And if the devil tried to remind you of someone else's fault or how people have wronged you, don't entertain it, guys. Quickly renounce it and say, in Jesus' name, I renounce that thought. I forgive them. I love them. I, you know, I do it every day because I don't want to be defiled. Amen. Can I have one... Um, uh, you know. Oh, I got it. Let me read this scripture. 1 Corinthians 11, 23. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it, this is my body, 
which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord, as we partake this bread that represents the sacrifice of your body on our behalf, we receive all your favor and blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's partake. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Lord, as we partake this grape that represents the shedding of the precious blood of Jesus our Lord, we receive, Lord, all the benefits, the blessings that the precious blood of Jesus our Lord have accomplished for us by the power of your Holy Spirit, O oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's partake. Amen. Hallelujah. Can we give the Lord one more big hand here? Let's worship the Lord one more time.